Hello everyone, it's me, Stacia Bastora, and I have finally finished my Manus video. So have you ever wondered exactly who Manus is? Is he the fruit of Pygmy? How was humanity created? And what is the association with the Dark Souls? And this video is for you. I have often pondered these questions myself since the release of the Arturius of the Abyss DLC. And I think I finally found the answer to some of these questions at least, but Feel free to provide your input, comment below, you know, point out any mistakes that I've made since I've been conducting this research. I actually used the history book, Japanese mythology in the primeval world, and it's been very helpful because it's like, I want to dive into the background of it. Like, it has to mean something. Like, nothing is placed in this game on accident. So, let's dive in. Who exactly is Manus, and is he the friend of Pygmy? The answer to this question is... Rather complicated, but first let's define what furtive pygmy means. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, furtive is defined as an action that is being done or acting secretly and quietly to avoid being noticed. Pygmy is defined as a member of one of several groups of very small people who live in Central Africa and someone who is not important or who has little skill. Manus is defined as a, as a Latin term meaning hand or of the hand used in medical names and descriptions. However, Manus is an, a name of Irish origin, so it could be associated with Gaelic mythology. And if we look at Ancestry.com, people with the name Manus tended to be farmers, laborers, hostlers, housekeepers, and people who worked with various sorts of agriculture. So in the opening cutscene, in the Age of Ancients, the world was unformed, unshrouded by fog, a land of gray crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from dark they came, and founded the, the souls of the lords within the flame. Nido the first of death, witch of Isleth and her daughters of chaos, Gwyn the lord of sunlight and his faithful knights, and the fruit of pygmy so easily forgotten. So the age of ancients... The world was unformed, and the fruit of pygmy, so easily forgotten, is important. What do we know about the fruit of pygmy? He, as the opening cut scene suggests, he's from the Age of Ancients, and he receives the Dark Soul, which is one of the four Lord Souls. He fragmented the Dark Soul in order to create the race of humanity that was so easily forgotten. But this is important. When looking at Dark Stalker Koth's dialogue, after the event of fire, an ancient lord... The ancient lords found the three souls, but your progenitor found the fourth unique soul, the dark soul. Your ancestor claimed the dark soul and waited for fire to subside, and soon the flames did fade, and only dark remained. So progenitor is defined as a person who thinks, who first thinks of something and caused it to happen. Synonyms and words related to progenitor are father, founding father, architect, and guinea pig. So Manus is the only one in Dark Souls being described as a father of anything, like father of the abyss. Regardless, now let's look at Japanese myth of Nagini. Nagini is the progenitor deity and is Amaterasu's grandson, who is usually ignored. Amaterasu is known as the sun goddess, and who is the sun goddess in Dark Souls? Guinevere. Now we can start to establish a family tree. So, Nagini's tale spans from the chasm between the mystic ages of the deities and the legendary ages of lesser but heroic beings. So, relating this back to Dark Souls time, this would be between the Age of Ancients and the Age of Fire. So, this would be like during the first flame. Upon Nagini's birth in heaven, he attained adulthood miraculously and was commissioned to go below and found a lineage of men, thereby extending the empirical sovereignty over the subcelestial world. Meaning, Nagini was cast from heaven, however, keep in mind that another lineage would also be found by Tusa no Wo, the storm god, which is Amatrasu's brother, Guinevere's brother, the nameless king. So Nagini donned a coverlet and came to earth bearing rice ears, thus bringing the gift of agriculture to men. And where do we see anything related to agriculture in Dark Souls? That would be Ulysil, because you can see gardeners tending to various plants. Another interesting fact is that in the Japanese myth system, 
Originally, humans were represented or termed as grass, known as human grass, and Dark Souls, the Chosen and the Dead, happens to find the only grass crest shield in the Dark Root Basin, which is where the, the Golden City of Ulysseel used to reside, meaning that the people of Ulysseel were known as the people of grass. And Gini was incarnated, and when he put on the coverlet, he lost his immortality. Also, when he put on the coverlets, he was also given an invigorated soul to get around the cosmos. And I think this invigorated soul is the dark soul, if we relate it back to the game. So now, Nagini came down to the central highlands of Kiishu, peak of a mountain, Takashiru. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing any of these names. I mean, no disrespect. Um, so then the local mountain god presented Nagini with two daughters to choose from for a wife. Nagini rejected the ugly immortal sister, the elder sister, Iwanaga Haim, in favor of the younger mortal sister, Kanohana no Sayuka Haim. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to shorten her name to Sayuka. So Iwanaga Haim means Princess of Stone Perpetuity or the Stone per Perpetuator Princess. Sakuya means Princess who blossoms the flowers of trees. So I think Sakuya is Dusk of Ulysseel, and I'll explain later in this video. So the Nagini myth can mean a few things. Nagini is the progenitor of all mankind, or he's the progenitor of the great human family, such as emperors with a few exceptions of important individuals, like national patriarchs, or hands-on rulers and focal representatives. However, Nagini's choice of choosing the younger sister over the elder sister was the choice that shortened human lifespans. This would cause all of his descendants in his main line to be short-lived. At this time, human populations were small, so the origins of the king's lineage necessarily tied to the origins of the entire population, aka civilized humanity. Nagini eventually died after siring offspring with Sakuya and was buried. Interestingly enough, after death, Japanese indigenous deities are found in dwellings within mountains or natural stones, like a cave, for instance. They're never put into man-made structures or wooden boxes or churches. Instead, sanctuaries have been built above a stone or gravel grave of this deity, and they also place stones that surround the deity's grave. So this fits Manus to a T. Like, you find his tomb or his grave in a natural cave formation, and his grave appears to be on top of a gravel patch that's encircled with stone. So I think Manus from Dark Souls is supposed to be Nagini. This is just my speculation and the truth that I choose to believe. But moving on, um, Japanese emperors until World War II said that they were living gods, that they were direct descendants from Nagini and considered themselves deities who wore the flesh of mortality around their godly spirits. Thus, they are humans who have realized their divinity. While all people have the essence of divinity within their immortal soul, the emperor is especially elevated being heaven's earthly representation. This suggests to me that humanity is a spirit and the soul is a seed to a source of power. This is why the chosen undead is sent on the quest to collect all the Lord souls so that they can power the entrance to the kiln of the first flame. Interestingly enough, Japanese believe that mankind emerges from trees, or more generally the motif of man descending from a plant species. Sakuya just so happens to be the plant ancestress, Thus, this is how I can tie Sakuya with the Dusk of Ulysseel, because she's associated with creating new life by using a tree. But we don't find this out until Dark Souls 3, when the Unkindled One finds a young white branch in the Ring City. And the description of the young white branch states that it's a young white branch used to transform into something that blends into the surrounding. Little Dusk's first sorcerer staff eventually became a seedling and then became three white birch samplings. The young branch is said to still contain echoes of Little Dusk's capriciousness. But you're like, oh, the time issues, and how is this possible? Well, I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but I'll be making a separate video on, like, the fantasy side of Ulysseel and explain how the time-space continuum works based on not only, like, end-game item descriptions, but Japanese mythology itself. 
That being said, Nagini's unwise choice of choosing Sakuya is considered to be a mythic trespass that exactly corresponds with the fall in the biblical Genesis and the potential for confirmment of immortality lost to humanity. Iwa Nagaheim, Sakuya's elder sister, is not counted as an ancestress of the Imperial line of humanity. However, Sakuya is counted as a member of the Imperial line because she is the mother of it. Now let's talk about the lineage as a man, because Susa Nowo's eldest son had a hand in establishing a separate lineage of humanity as well. Keep in mind that Susa Nowo is a storm god, and the sun goddess's brother, meaning Guinevere's brother, the nameless king. So yeah, you know, you know where I'm going with this. The incest. But that's how royalty is, right? Like, even in past culture of humanity of our world, like... It's a common theme. And it gets even weirder because Sakuya has also played a role in creating the second lineage. She has the role of playing the Sons of Heaven, Daughters of Earth theme. So put a pin in this idea for now. So both Nagini and Suza Nowo's marriage were unions of both heavenly family deities and the earthly family deities. These marriage alliances were similar to how traditional Japanese marriages were contracts between families rather than between individuals for the purpose of maintaining or improving bloodline, social status, inheritance, etc. But I'm using traditional in the context of olden days and not necessarily modern Japanese marriages. I have a quote from Hokart that explains exactly how these marriages work. So, quote, Intermarriage is a constant feature in dual organizations. It means that every sky man must marry an earthly woman, and every earth man a sky woman. Consequently, sky king must take an earth woman to queen. End quote. Later, so Sakuya ends up wedding Susan Nowo's eldest son, while at the same time being married to Nagini. This connects Sakuya with both lineages of humanity. However, once she marries the eldest son, she receives a name change. Instead of Sakuya, she's known as Chiru. Chiru means flaking or falling, indicated by the fall of a flower petal, in reference to bestowing mortality on, on the Azumo monody of humanity. The name change can be seen as a demotion because in Nagini's myth, Sakuya was the flower blossoming princess, but then she becomes the flower falling princess in Susan Nowo's myth. In both ways, her name implies that she is the one who causes the fall of humanity. She causes mortality. So now... I feel comfortable answering the question, is Manus the Furt of Pygmy? Based on the information that I've found during my research, yes, I do think Manus was the original holder of the Dark Soul, but he split the soul so humanity could be born. However, based on the fact that there are two lineages of mankind and that the spirit of humanity can be bought, sold, or stolen from individual humans, so this means that the original purpose of the small spirits of humanity has been transformed into a symbol of power. After all, humanity is what keeps an individual from descending into a hollowed state. The definition of pygmy being a member of one of several groups of very small people in Central Africa, this implies to me that there's more than one group of pygmy lords. The Unkindled One finds this out in Dark Souls 3 in the Ring City when they run across a pygmy lord crawling to get away from Gale. So now what this means is that the Dark Soul has many human holders, related to a bloodline, and whoever holds the most humanity spirits within their blood becomes a pygmy lord, and can use their humanity for however they see fit, because they're not going to hollow, and other people are going to worship these lords because they don't want to hollow either, so that creates the power structure that we see in Dark Souls and the Ring City. And when you look at the item descriptions of the small envoy banner, the phrase the pygmy king said when he was crawling to Filianor's tower, and the blood of the dark soul itself, you can kind of see how this picture has been painted. The description of the small envoy banner states that it's a small banner used by envoys of the great Lord Gwen in the days of yore. Face the ring city cliff and hold the banner high to summon the facilitators of transport. For the pygmies who took the dark soul, the great lord gifted the Ring City, an isolated place at World's End, and his beloved youngest daughter promising her that he would return for her. And when you look at the pygmy king who's crawling away from Gale to get to Filianor's tower, he's crying out and he says, Oh, Filianor, help me please. The Red Hood is coming to eat us. 
eat our dark souls and then if we look at the blood of the dark soul itself it states the blood of the dark soul that seeps from the hole within the slave nightingale used as pigment for his lady and Ariandel to depict a painted world when gale comes upon the pygmy lords he discovers that their blood had dried long ago and so he consumed the dark soul so he's eating the blood to obtain liquid humanity is what that implies to me so really the fact that he can use the blood as pigment to create a new world says that the dark soul still has power even after it has long been spilled my god dark souls is so convoluted but i love it anyways you guys that's all the time that i have left for today and if you like this video please like and subscribe so you can stay tuned because in the next video I'll be talking about the fantasy aspects of Ulysseel, the Ulysseel Abyss, and how Manus that we see, like Manus the father of the Abyss created that, and I'll also be explaining how the time-space continuum works based on items in the game and on Japanese mythology, so yeah, I'll please feel free to leave comments below in the description, and I encourage conversation for sure. Anyway, that's a wrap, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.